We're here with Far East Movement. Uh, we've got Kev Nish. Hey, what's going on? Jay Spliff, Progress, hey. and DJ Verman. How you guys doing tonight? We're good. Oh, thank, you. thank you guys for having us. It's a great uh, show tonight. It's a lot of fun. Well, thank you for coming. We were all stoked about you guys coming, and Sweet. we were looking forward to a good show, and it was. Cool. That's good to hear. Um, we'd like to start with you. Where were you from, and could you tell us how you got interested in music? Yeah, I mean, well, we all grew up together in L.A. Um, you know, we would just be those, the group of kids that after school or after, like, random side jobs, we would all meet up and try to figure out, like, how to record music in the back of a computer, and it just ended up what became a hobby after school and after work every day to finally putting our music up online, figuring out how to do that, to pressing up CDs, pressing up t-shirts, and being those crazy guys running around LA, like, buy my shirt, here, check out check out our new music, you know what I mean? And slowly that started to build into, um, I don't know, I'm gonna say movement, but you know, just it, it started to build into, started a scene where, you know, we would be doing shows around LA, and finally, you know, we got a song on the radio. And so it all just kind of escalated, but it was all just, being friends, kicking it, having fun, and um, just staying creative. So, how long have you guys known each other? Too long. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, uh, I mean, we grew up, it would be like high school, like, if someone would like mess with pro, Chase Flip would be right there to give him the young one too. And you know, it's like we'd all, we'd all be hanging out together, we'd probably like, I'd fall asleep in class, and Jay would let me like copy his homework, you know, it was just, we grew up together, but we are, we're more fans of Verman because Verman, for, I said Verman. <laughs> Verman. Verman was, was a, he, he was, not anymore, but he was a famous DJ on the radio in LA. And so we were, <laughs> they're all lousy. <laughs> but yeah, no, he, he still is. But he would, uh, we'd always hear him on the radio station, and, and we had a chance to meet him just by going to one of his gigs and giving him a demo and be like, why don't you come check us out? Maybe you can join the group. And he said no, so we put a gun to his head and kidnapped him, and <laughs> now he's here. Isn't that right, Burman? I'm going to some guys, Perfect. please save me. All right, good, good, good. Yeah, but that, that's kind of, yeah, so that's how we all clicked up, and we all just been friends since forever. Okay, how did you guys come up with the name Far East Movement, if you guys have known each other for so long? It was actually a name of a song, but inspired kind of by Jay Spliff. He was messing around. This was like during like the G Unit days, yeah. and it was like G Unit, G Unit, you know what I mean? And it's like he was—I think he was just joking around. We were all kind of messing around. It's like Far East Movement, you know, just for fun. And we're like, let's write a song about that. So we wrote a song about kind of like a new generation of of kids, like you know, keeping it multicultural, kind of like not being afraid to just be who you are, have fun. Fashion was involved in that song. It was a terrible song, <laughs> like the lyrics, everything was just terrible, but. But it kind of inspired us to take on the name, the Far East Movement, and we go by FM for short. And uh, yeah, it stuck, so. Now, I was at RIT the other week, Rochester Institute of Technology, oh, nice. when you guys were performing. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you performed with Mike Posner mm -hmm. that night. Uh, who are some of the top names that you've performed with uh, on your tour? Uh, it's been a year. It's been a, one of those years. Good ones. Uh, Lil Wayne. We were just on tour with Wayne. Rick Ross. Rick Ross, Kerry Hilson on, on uh, the I Am Still Music tour. That was dope. Was. Lady Gaga. I went on tour Australia with her. with Rihanna. Rihanna. Um, it's been crazy. It's been one of those years that a lot of people that we've been fans of in the music industry growing up, um, being able to share the stage with them, like Jay-Z, um, Pitbull, LMFAO, who we're on tour with right now. Um, so, you know, we're very grateful. And uh, you take a little bit of every tour with you and, and help, you know, really uh, develop yourself as an artist. And it's, it's um, we're always learning. And next year, we can't wait to see who we'll be to touring with. Maybe a... Barack Flock of Flame. Barack Flock of Flame. Um, Beast, hard the Beastie Boys. That'd be a... Yes. Yeah. Head of the state. 
Yeah. Um, like a G6 was written and produced by the Cataracts, we know, and how did they help you get your name out there? And that? Was, uh, we actually met them, they were a fan of us, I guess, from a song we did called Girls on the Dance Floor, which was starting to like break on LA as a song that got us signed to a Cherry Tree Interscope. And so through a DJ, they're like, yo, um, they want to work with you guys. And so we got in the studio, and we were just kind of going through beats, trying to see what the vibe was. Didn't really, you know, we're like, why don't we just make Girls on the Dance Floor Part 2? You know, something something with the same sound, but, you know, just, uh, let's just do something for the house party kids. So we went in, and, I mean, we actually co-wrote the song, and they had a, a song they did with a new artist. It was an unknown artist, a girl named Dev. And they had this song, and we were listening to the song, and there was a bridge part, and it was a, uh, it was Dev saying like popping bottles in the ice, and we're like, you know how like Eminem the song Stan, how he sampled Dido, we're like, why don't we sample Dev? And so they asked Dev, and she was like, hell yeah, I'm, I'm down, that'd be dope. And right away we just finished the song, put it online, and it just kind of started building. So it was cool because it was more like a together effort of you know us combining our worlds and just doing something new for fun and it was cool to see like three different acts launch off of a song like that. Now your song Like a G6 I believe it spent 23 straight weeks in the top 40 Wow! and wow. it hit the number one spot making your group the first Asian American group to ever hit that spot in the US charts. Right. Uh, how does that influence not only children here in the US but around the world? Oh, I mean, it's, it's that's crazy because we make, you know, we we don't just make party music, but we make party music. So it's like to know that, that there's another layer to that is, is inspiring for us. Um, I hope that, I mean, we all hope, you know, because we, we always, like we said on stage, you know, we just grew up as everyday kids in L.A., grinding, hopefully, you know, faith in, in God, faith in music, faith, and just doing what we love to do led us here. And so if that will inspire anyone just kind of growing up as Americans on, you know, that American dream, how to do it out here, then that's cool. And at the end of the day, you know, we're really grateful to anyone that acknowledges the, the social aspect of what we, what we do. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we go hard at the clubs, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we make party music too, but we'll, you know, we'll throw a rocketeer in there and we'll show our, our scope of how we make music because we grew up on so many different types. But yeah, we are definitely grateful and we hope that beyond just that, we, we actually do stuff kind of behind the scenes to inspire kids, the next generation. We teach workshops through an organization called Forcey the Power where, you know, they cut a lot of funding a lot of the times in schools. The creative and the arts is the first thing to go in the funding. So, um, you know, like Progress and, and this uh, lady, Diane Kitamura, and they, they, they've developed this Forcey the Power and International Secret Agents. And just a way for us, when we have free time, to motivate the next generation and spend like hand, I don't want to say hand on hand, but quality time, you know, to just inspire people. So, yeah. What does it mean to be fly like a G6? Look like DJ Verma, you know? It's a fly dude. It's a fly dude. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank I mean, you know, when we made the song, it was kind of like the expression, because we could have named, we were just gonna name it G6. We're gonna name it all these things, but the expression is just like, you know, when Jay Z talks about G4 pilots, yeah. and or you know, when rappers are go like, yo, I got that unreleased Bentley, that brand new Mercedes, that 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 CL. 800, I don't know, whatever it is, you know what I mean? That, things up. Yeah, Maybach 2013, not even out yet. So the idea was, you know, stay fly like an unreleased private jet that now happens to be released. But it's, you know, it's a lifestyle track. It's a track, it's that dirty bass sound, it's just wilding out, having fun. I mean, you know, it's not poetry, you know what I mean? It's just a good time, so. Going forward, how do you plan on continuing the success that you've had to this point? Uh, stay focused, keep it real with the fans and the people, have fun, um, don't stray from any of that, and work hard. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.